Hello everyone and welcome to the One Class channel. My name is Donna and I'm a recent master's graduate from the material science program from the University of Ontario Institute of Technology, also known as Ontario Tech University. So today we're going to go over some commonly asked questions in chemistry at the high school, college, and university level. So if you needed any help with homework or with tutoring, then check out the links in the description below. Now let's just get started on our set of questions for today's session. Okay, so question one says to explain the electron configuration of copper. Okay, so first let's write out the electron configuration for copper. And the first step in writing the electron configuration is to first divide your periodic table into the different, different orbital shells. So here's an example of the periodic table and how it is divided into the S block, which are the first two columns here, and the P block, which is this green section. The D block are the middle transition metals, and the F block is, uh, are these last two rows, which are the lactonides and actinides. So we identify copper on the periodic table, so you can see it's right here, uh, atomic number 29 in the 3D section. And then starting from hydrogen, we move left to right across the periodic table, writing the row number followed by the block letter. And also in superscripts, we're going to show how many electrons are in that orbital. So let's start off uh, writing the electron configuration. Uh, so starting from hydrogen, we write the row number one, the block letter S, and then to show how many orbital, how many electrons are in this orbital, we use the superscript of two, since only two electrons can fit in the S orbital. So now we're on to the next row. So row two, block S, and again, two electrons will fill this orbital. And now we move over to the 2p section. And in the p orbital, this can house six electrons. So we write 2p6. And then to the next row, we write 3s2. And then moving over, we write 3p6, and then we move over to the next row, which is 4s, and then 2. And then finally, when we get to the d block, you'll notice that we write the row number minus 1. And similarly, when we get to the f block, we write the row number minus 2. So when we get to the d block, we write 3, and then D, and then count up all the electrons up to copper. So we count out 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and we write 3D9. Okay, so here we have the initial electron configuration for copper, it's a nine. But typically, uh, the 3d orbital becomes lower in energy than the 4s orbital when we have transition metals. And it's more likely that we are going to fill in this d orbital than we are to fill in the 4s orbital. So I'm just going to add a note here that for transition metals, the 3D orbital becomes lower in energy than 4S. 
so what we do now is we kind of uh, give one of the electrons from the 4s orbital to 3d and we switch the two to write an increasing energy so let me just write what we have so far And now we can write 3d10, so it will be in lower energy than 4s, and also one of the electrons in 4s will move into the 3d and fill that in first, so that we have a filled d orbital. And then to show we have one more electron, we just say 4s1. So now this is the final electron configuration for copper. So now let's see what the junior tutor said. In writing the electron configuration of an element, we follow the off-bow principle, shown below, which states that the order of energy will dictate the order in which electrons are arranged in its orbitals. Therefore, the lowest energy will be occupied by electrons first. Remember that each orbital can hold a different number of electrons. The s orbital can hold 2, the p orbital can hold 6, the d orbital can hold 10, and the f orbital can hold up to 14. So copper has 29 electrons, and using the off-bow principle, the electron configuration is the following, so this is what we had initially as well. However, for transition metals, the 3d orbital becomes lower in energy than the 4s orbital. Thus, the correct electron configuration for copper is the following. So it ends off with 3d10 and then 4s1. Yep, so this solution is correct.